All right, uh, today we're looking at equations of quadratic form, which really means if I am given the solutions to a quadratic equation, how do I find the equation we started with? There's a couple different ways to go about it, and what I am going to show you is a method that works beyond quadratics. When you have any degree polynomial, when you get into pre-cal, this is going to be the way that's going to best help you. So if you think about um, this quadratic, if we were to solve it with the x method, negative 4 goes on top, negative 3 goes in the bottom. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3. Well, that's negative 4 and positive 1. So my factors end up being x minus 4 and x minus, excuse me, x plus 1. And after I solve that out, my two solutions end up having the opposite sign of the one I started with. Negative 4 and positive 1 gives me solutions for 4 and negative 1. So if I think about it that way, to find the two factors that I'd be starting with to get my quadratic, I'm going to find the opposites. So when x is equal to 1, I'm going to take x minus 1. And with x equal to, I'm going to take x minus 2. Those are the two factors that I started out with. And I'm going to just FOIL x squared minus x minus 2x plus 2. My equation x squared minus 3x plus 2 is the quadratic I would have started with. Um, and that one's a little bit on the easier side. Let's look at number 2. Again, going for the opposites, x minus negative 2 and x minus 1 fourth. Before I FOIL, I'm going to do a few things with this one. Minus a negative really means plus. And we don't really like multiplying with fractions. So the same thing we would have done if we were factoring up here and had a fraction, I'm going to do here. Multiply my denominator. So 4x minus 1. This is what I will FOIL and get 4x squared. This is 8x minus 1 gives me 7x minus 2. There's the quadratic that I started with. Now, same thing is true when I have um, irrational solutions, something with non-perfect roots. So if these are my two solutions, what I'm going to have here is x minus 3 plus the square root of 2 and x minus 3 minus the square root of 2. Those parentheses are important because I need to distribute that minus sign. So I'm going to have x minus 3 minus the square root of 2 and x minus 3 plus the square root of 2. Now, as this is, this looks really ugly. This looks really messy. But what this really is, is like a factor from a difference of perfect squares. Remember, a minus b times a plus b is what I get when I factor a squared minus b squared. So in that case, the x minus 3 is my a, and the square root of 2 is my b value. So x minus 3 squared minus the square root of 2 squared is an equivalent expression. So what I can do here now is FOIL this out. And then if I square the square root of 2, that's just going to be 2. Combine those constants, x squared minus 6x plus 7. Okay. One more time again, um, not one more time, two more times. Same with imaginary solutions. I can break this out into two separate ones, 3 plus 6i and 3 minus 6i. And I'm going to do my same procedure. Take the difference of each solution or the opposite of each solution, I should say. x minus 3 minus 6i, x minus 3 plus 6i. And again, I've got that difference of squares breakdown here, where I've got x minus 3 as my a and 6i as b. So x minus 3 squared minus 6i squared is an equivalent expression. To break this all out, x squared minus 6x plus 9 again, minus, now if I square 6i, that's going to give me 36i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is really minus negative 36. So that's going to become plus, And my final quadratic will be x squared minus 6x plus 
50, not 54, excuse me, 45. I added too many numbers, 45. Okay, last one, and it happens to be imaginary again. It's already split up for us. X minus 1 plus 2i and x minus 1 plus 2i, or x, that would be 1 minus 2i. Again, distributing that negative, x minus 1, ugh, minus 2i, my hand is not listening to my brain. x minus 1 minus 2i, x minus 1 plus 2i. So again, here's my a, here's my b, x minus 1 squared minus 2i squared. I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus, again, if I square 2i, that gives me 4i squared. i squared is really negative 1. So this is minus negative 4, which of course becomes plus. So x squared minus 2x plus 5 is my final answer. So obviously these are easier to do when you have rational answers, real numbers. It gets a little bit trickier when you have irrational numbers like imperfect squares and imaginary solutions. But just following these steps every time will set you up for when we do this with higher degree polynomials, not just quadratics.